Hello guys, we are at Comet. This is why you come to Dayton Hamvention to see new stuff. And uh, hey, Comet's, Comet's gonna show me something. Uh, hello Mick. Hey, nice, thanks for stopping by right before the crowds hit. Yeah, this is the best time to get video. But as you, uh, we've got the analyzer hooked up to this dipole. It's a five band dipole, so we got a lot of opportunity to, to check out. Okay, cool. So we have a live uh, demo here. Yep, let's just turn it on right from scratch. Okay. Lights up, the graphic display lights up, the uh, analog needles are available. Cool. We're going to switch the uh, band selector, as you can see across that top line. Right. All those blue dots are ham uh, bands. They're, so, for example, 10 meters, we want to see where this antenna is uh, is uh, tuned at the moment. We press band sweep. Cool. It'll start from one end of the band, it takes about 30 seconds, and it'll chart our. It's just uh, sweeping the whole chart and the whole band. The whole time, wow, look at that. So there's our dip. Now see this, let me ask you something, Mick, because I, I've been fighting this and people have been beating me up on YouTube. I am a fan of resonant antennas. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do is use analyzers. And people are so gung-ho on using tuners and tuning a SWR at 15 to one. Tell them, will you tell them why it's important to have an analyzer to make sure your antenna is resonant? Because evidently they don't believe me. But this is really what makes a good antenna, is having an analyzer to make it resonant on the band, correct? Correct, that's where it's most efficient, that's where you're gonna get your best performance, your best receive, your best transmit. You gotta use an antenna tuner sometime, you got a big antenna up, you can't go up on a ladder or up in a tower and change the element lengths right. from time to time. Right. But whatever your band is that you're most want to optimize, you gotta have that resonant. Yeah. And, and I, I made a couple videos on, you know, making a resonant antenna, showing the difference, and, and not using a tuner. I don't use a tuner. I use an analyzer. I sweep the antenna, and I tune it for the middle of the band, but some people just uh, argued with me. But something like this, I mean, this this is the last analyzer you'll ever need, right? Correct. I mean, I have an MFJ, but this is far more advanced than that. Well, you can see right now we're checking out the uh, SWR dips, 1.2 to 1 with almost 50 ohms of impedance right at that 706. Right. So this antenna, that's exactly where it's going to be the best performance. Right. Now, if you want to go up to 7.1, you need to change the element lengths up on the antenna or use an antenna you tuner. Use a tuner to just yeah keep it so your radio is okay. Yeah. But, it's, yeah. but it's still, you're, you're going to be much more efficient at 7.06. Right no matter what the tuner's saying. And right. that proves the efficiency of the antenna in that it's not super wide. For that length, if it were super wide, that would indicate it's a dummy load. Yeah. Right. Or not very efficient. So how much does this unit cost? And is this, how long has this been out, this one? This is the Mark II version. The Mark I came out about seven years ago. Mark II added the graph and the multi-layer uh, displays uh, about three years ago. So this will be the, the third Dayton we've been selling this. And one. what's this one go for? MSRP is a four, 49. Most of the dealers are selling in the 389 range at convention. Right. Well, I think it's definitely worth it. This this would, I mean, I have a nine band vertical high gain and having, so can you do multi SWR sweep with that or one yeah. band at a time? Let's, 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 let's check that out. 10 meters is best. All right. Because we're in, at Hamvention, we've got a lot of RF in here. So sometimes it messes up our, our right. display. Mm -hmm. But we are going to turn this over from the automatic sweep we already showed to, okay. the, to the manual sweep. Right. All right, now it's going to ask me to load in some parameters. Number one, what, where do we want to set the center? So I'm just going to use the analog needles to find the lowest SWR dip, mm -hmm. and I'm going to press center. I so think now, one make for the width. that's 28.8. Now it's asking me plus or minus how many kilohertz are we going to sweep. Mm -hmm. We'll go plus or minus, uh, let's see, it's just kind of a narrow antenna. Let's go to about 800 kilohertz on both sides. Press bandwidth. Now when I manually sweep through the band, it's only going to sweep though that 1.6 meg, 800 kilohertz on each side. Right. That's my SWR dip. So if I want to shift that lower or higher, and I'm going to go out and I'm going to adjust the antenna, and I'm going to have Chip just rotate that so that we can get a little bit of an impedance change. Once the antenna moves closer to that metal, we're right. going to change some impedance. Okay. If you notice up there there's a red dot, I'm going to press that button, it turns blue. The next time I sweep it in blue, it's going to see what that did. Well, it shifted it down, oh, maybe about 10 kilohertz. I see, okay, kilohertz. yeah. So whatever we did, we shifted it lower in frequency. Right. Now, if we want to shift it again. Uh, <laughs> the Armstrong rotor. All the way, yeah, all the way around. We'll see if we can get enough change to show another. Uh, you can press this button again to get another color. And the next time you sweep it, 
it's going to be in green. So whatever chip just did there, the SWR rose a little bit and shifted a little bit higher in frequency. Now you can see what's actually happening, happening. every time you move that antenna. You don't need to make notes. You can just overlay color after color after color. Right. That's 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 cool. That's so cool. so instead of like taking a snapshot, just overlays it right on the screen. It shows you correct by color what you every time you changed it. Yep. Very cool. That is cool. Well, guys, the Comet CAA 500 Mark II. This is at Dayton. You can get this at a lot of different dealers, yeah, Gigaparts, dealer and every dealer has it. But uh, this is why you come to Dayton Hamvention to see all this fun stuff. I appreciate it, Mick. Thank you very much. Hey, happy to see you. Take care.